last night at eight o'clock, a number of people um, lit candles and there were buildings as well lit up. The Blackpool Tower uh, was illuminated in honour. Lincoln Cathedral also. And over in Belfast, the Titanic building. Um, all the lights, the yellow lights, in memory of a year of lockdown and the lives lost in the pandemic. Mm. More than 126,000 people died um, with COVID. And of course, many others have um, lost their lives, other conditions, other diseases. Um, and been the been battle goes on as well, doesn't it? I, I, one of the things that struck me, and I went out at 8 o'clock yesterday and a few of my neighbours were out. When we were doing the clap for carers, of course, it was, in the, it was summer. So it was daylight when we were clapping. Mm. But of course, it was, it was dark last night. And so the candles that people had put on their doorsteps and the, and the phone lights that they were holding up just really shone something very special. It was emitting a, a moment and a thought. And there was a few of us there. There was a handful on our street. It certainly wasn't like it was for the mm. clap for carers, but it didn't seem to matter to me. It was our moment to be able to spend them. And, you know, we all have a close contact with somebody somewhere who has been affected by coronavirus, uh, family members, friends. Uh, we've been kept from our family because of it. So it was, I, for, for me, it was an important moment to be able just to spend on my doorstep just thinking. And that was reflecting. at eight o'clock. And then an hour later on Finding Derek, on, yeah. ITV, uh, our friend, Kate Garraway. Um, we spoke to her yesterday morning and I know that interview moved a huge number of people. I mean, no one who watches Kate's story and saw the documentary last night can fail to be moved about what Derek is going through, um, but also the strength and resilience of Kate and her children Remarkable. and Derek's family. I mean, it, it, it is a, a real challenge for them. And while, you know, many people have been affected over the past year, uh, that battle goes on for Derek and for Kate. It's an incredible... Uh, incredibly brave thing to do for Kate to share this story. It's such a personal story and a lot of people have an opinion about, you know, that. But I think the thing that Kate was always so keen and particularly from Derek's perspective, Derek is a psychotherapist. He retrained. He had a, he had a life in politics. Mm. I mean, Ranva, you will know. And, and his, his legacy in the world of politics is, is known, isn't it? Yeah, huge. I mean, the number of big hitters out there in, you know, who respect him and adore him and thank him for the sort of advice he gave. And do you know what? So, so I, last night, I couldn't watch it. I thought, I'm, I won't be able to sleep afterwards. I'm going to watch it when it goes on the hub. You know, when you know someone and you've of sort course, of been so watching from the it. sidelines and uh, it's actually, it's just really hard to watch, isn't it? But um, do you know, just watching that just reminds me of the last conversation I had with Derek was um, at the Christmas party after Kate, Kate came out of um, I'm a Celeb. And um, she was off, obviously, being amazing with everybody at this bit. It was, it was a party at a pub we, we sure. were there when we could all have one. And, um, it was like a different and time. I, yeah, it does. And I, and I just stood with Derek for ages. And we talked, I talked to Kate about parenting issues in the past, because I'm a single mum. And I just, you know, occasionally you have, you hit a brick wall where you think, I don't quite know what to do here. And so she said, talk to Derek, because he's really... And that's the thing, you know, that's what everybody's saying, that his love for his children, and Kate talked about it yesterday. And he gave me all this amazing advice about... You, you know, there's a particular course, I won't go into it, but he said there's this thing you can do, you know, from a psychotherapist's point of view to help you be a better parent and do it as soon as possible and all of that. And actually it just brings back, you know, just in his heart, actually just being a family man. Yeah. And, and when Kate said she, that the children were so resilient because he'd filled them up with Absolutely. so much he'd armed love them all that, that for ability, this yeah. awful moment that they didn't know was around the corner. And it just makes me feel like, gosh, that was the last conversation, you know, about being an amazing parent and, yeah. and was knowing... his central you know, thrust Tenet, in life, yeah. actually. I think the no, knowing how and passionate he was and is and about is. mental health and the importance of yeah. that and understanding what Kate's been through. I think Kate felt like it was really important that she is able to share the story. Yeah. Because, and, as, and this is the yeah. really, really important thing that, that I know that she was concerned about. It wasn't about Kate. Obviously, the story centred around them, but she's trying to tell that story for the thousands of families up and down the country that have a family member in a similar situation. Who are suffering it, from long COVID yeah. or any chronic disease. And not even, not even COVID as well. There are people that will be struggling and that Absolutely. are battling hard to mm. try and find their way back to something that was a normal lie. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, 
we constantly we laugh about it a lot, don't we? That Kate is the, just an extraordinary person in so many ways, incredibly <laughs> infuriating and, and ridiculously disorganised and chaotic. And has more bags than anybody uh, I've ever known, and carries, she carries them everywhere. Her life in her bags, <laughs> yeah. doesn't she? But you know, it's it's so interesting you say that because we yes, there is an element of chaos, and yet so, watching and the, the documentary, she's got it. She is so together, and when you think that she's juggling so many jobs, all of those balls, yeah. and also having to talk, obviously, to medics all the time mm. about her husband. And, and the way that she and the children involved Eric in their family life still via FaceTime. I mean, she makes time for all of it. Yeah, she's and researched she... tire tirelessly yes. about what Derek uh, what would be best for Derek. So researching globally, you know, should he be having this treatment? What about that? What about this? Have doctors, have you considered this? Really so hard at the totally beginning the when there were no Yeah, treatment. and she's been talking to specialists in Australia. She's been talking to specialists Absolutely. in America. Like any concerned mm. relative, would you want to find the right treatment? Maybe something that somebody hasn't thought right. about at the same time as, as being a mum and trying to work out how you manage the finances within this situation yeah. and what do I do about work mm. and, and schooling how do I keep school and homeschooling going? and and all of those incredible yeah. elements and of course Hilary I know and it, it's it's not over the battle for sure. Derek and for oh, them absolutely. is not over is it absolutely no absolutely and for me some of the most moving scenes uh, that, that we saw in the, in the documentary were the, the fact that it has to be so remote, that the family are at home doing family things, uh, just playing s simple games that they're playing, but still remotely from their father. Yeah. Uh, and that must be so tough, but it's, it's the little things that we identify with that make it so human, such a human story. Do you know what, when you were mentioning around the, when she was doing I'm a Celebrity, and I used, okay. I was, you know, so interested in how she was getting, she was just a superstar. Wasn't she? Celebrity. I used to talk to Derek about it and he'd tell me, you know, he told me the story about the bikinis that she Yeah, had. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? <laughs> he burst with pride about Kate. He was, he is so proud of her and he would be so proud of her doing this, what she's doing. Absolutely. And this documentary. Yeah, and I think we can be rightly very proud of her as well and understand that all we want for, for you is to know who Kate is and she is that person that you see. Th that is Kate right there. Massive smile, family round her, more bags than you could possibly imagine. <laughs> uh, and usually a big wool knit something or other she's wearing. And, and so thank you for yeah. all the extraordinary messages that you, I've been sent personally, it's got, you know, and, and that you've sent us today, just all of you talking about what an extraordinary woman she is. We will make sure she gets all of them because as she said way back, and we've, she's extraordinary, we've been doing this for a year. Every single one of those messages she has read and yes. she takes some sort of comfort and support from at a time when, and of course the cameras were following her and Lucy, the documentary maker, did an amazing job, an amazing job in really difficult circumstances. But there were times when it is really hard for her and she doesn't have the smile on her face and it is really, really mm -hmm. cripplingly difficult to try and keep going. And those messages are a huge, mm. huge support to her. So mm. we can't thank you enough as mm. well. I mean, there's something mm. very special for us mm. to be a part of this program. It certainly feels like that our extended family are all sitting around the table and are behind the Absolutely cameras and are up right. in the production office. Mm. But as an extension of that, you as our viewers and the support you give us is hugely important. So on behalf of all yeah. of us here, thank you for looking after her as well.